I just finished watching the first episode of Oshinoko, and I don't know if you can tell, um, but yeah, no, I cried like a little bitch. Oshinoko, with one episode, might have just cemented itself as one of the greatest animes of all time, and above all else, an anime I feel everyone needs to watch before they die. In particular, the first episode. While I'm not at all familiar with the source material by any means, outside of being told that if you love stories that when you engage with them will break you, as well as make you fuck a different person, then I would love this. And needless to say, I feel emotionally violated and my day has been made. All it took was a few minutes to have me invested and only 90 minutes to have me so invested that that investment turns into something I don't usually do. Never in my 10 plus years on YouTube I've ever felt so compelled by one episode to immediately make a video without a script like this just to get my thoughts out there. In fact, I don't think the first episode of an anime has ever made me want to scream out my opinions like this into the wilderness. I don't think the first episode of an anime has ever changed me the way Oshinoko has. <laughs> I mean the title of this video when I say it. Take 90 minutes out of your day to ensure that Oshinoko will have a place in your schedule to watch the first episode. This might be the most important series to come out this year. And I know the Trolls Band Together movie's coming out. It's pretty good. So let me back up that statement with talks of why Oshinoko's first episode is so incredible and should not be missed out on. Aka Akasaka and Mengo Yokoyari's Oshinoko is a story that offers a look into the glamorous life of what it means to be famous. With this episode's focus solely being on that of the idol industry that Japan is so content on portraying as innocent and charming, but in reality is much darker and bleaker than outsiders looking in may realize. Much like how idols conduct themselves in front of fans, it's all a lie. A, a giant lie. And while my knowledge of the industry is solely based on a few video interviews I've seen on previous idols, I may have come into this episode with preconceptions of the industry already, but this anime outright tells you how bad the industry can be. Needless to say, despite having a pretty nice time with the Idol Masters uh, manga that Phenom Sage recommended to me, uh, I can't trust these smiles anymore. Tell me what you're thinking. Be honest with me. The terrible nature of the industry isn't just explored through its harsh practices behind the scenes in this episode. It shows you a bit more of a personal darkness that I haven't seen spread in this medium before. It exposes a horrific truth that I think people on the outside may never truly understand. Your perception of the person you may admire the most is never the full truth. The happy person in front of you, the one you believe is always smiling, always dazzling you, always strong in front of you, isn't that person at all. You're just being deceived because you never truly are seeing the full picture. This episode refuses to stay silent about the overtly corrupt and disgusting practices that take place in this industry. And honestly, it's such a breath of fresh air to see a series properly reflect that truth of it. From exclaiming just how bullshit insane it is that those who partake in the idol industry are prohibited from having relationships or children. In fear that it will somehow break the image of purity in the idol, allowing hardcore fans to truly envision themselves as truly loved by the group through meet and greets and allowing that vision to deeper the more money that is invested into merch and financial support of the group. Do you not see just how fucked up that is? This one episode showcases in a brilliant way so many unfortunate commonalities that come with the status of fame. To reiterating to just how dangerous a field like this truly is, to always having to hide your private life and affairs from people so it doesn't leak into the media and ruin the lives of those working both with and for you. Imagine having to bear the weight of that, but also bear the grunt of having to deal with people's completely irrational yet heartbreaking criticisms. The fact that life becomes suffocating when you're famous and money isn't an issue is something that often gets lost in translation. Because people are so quick to assume that money and status is the ultimate happiness and as cliche as it sounds, shut the fuck up, you're an idiot. Yes, money would be great, and in turn, sure, it might make me happy, but that's a temporary happiness. And yes, I say that as someone who hasn't actually experienced wealth like that, 
But that being said, I, 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 just watch the episode. My gal is miserable. It's such a powerful 90 minutes, and I'm just so thankful it will not just offend idol-obsessed freaks who refuse to understand the mere concept that the person you idolize is still a person with feelings and emotions, but this may even shed light on just how vile the life of fame can actually be. This one episode has already explored areas that people don't often think about because it's not something that affects them. It's a series that perhaps not all of us can relate to, but it's a message we all need to understand. Our words are our strongest weapon, and are also one of our strongest weaknesses. This episode, with its brilliant demonstration of this, is portrayed in various ways. From horridly high expectations people have put on their idols, to only supporting or denying them based on their own interpretations of them. To showcasing how those who have acquired fame consistently combat criticism. And do you know what the end result of that battle will be? Utter defeat. Toxicity is always louder than positivity, and people are so quick to attack, and yet so slow to defend. Seeing these characters battle such real and raw circumstances, and the way they were portrayed in this one episode was just beautiful, honestly. I not only cried twice watching this, and being the little emotionless goblin creature I am, I was honestly surprised on how much this would affect me. I also just want to thank the creators of this story, uh, as well as the animators uh, and everyone involved in that first episode for articulating a feeling that a lot of us have that is very commonplace but is so hard to describe. I see a lot of comments on this channel. I see comments about how whenever I stray from main abyss related content, people are less inclined to support what I do. I see comments that attack my inflections as I speak or the way I look. And I sometimes see comments that merely attack my energy and the way I present myself. And I'm not going to pretend. Uh, I will receive maybe one of these comments every now and then. And in a pool of 10 positive ones, that one negative one sticks with me the most. Even if it's irrational. Even if it's not even criticism, but straight up insulting. For some reason, those 10 other positive comments drown out. I'm sure this is a feeling a lot of people could relate to, right? Like, if you're an artist, if you're a YouTuber, if you're a musician, a, a designer, a writer, so on and so forth. For some reason, toxicity is always louder than positivity. And I think Oshinoko's first episode does such a good job at illustrating that. Because when anyone is doing what they love, and they are attacked for it, that negativity sticks with you. And look, I know it's an anime. I know it's a cartoon on a screen. And I know the premise is literally, it's about a guy who is a doctor who then dies, but that gets reincarnated as his uh, favorite idol's son, who happened to be the same doctor who helped her give birth to her kids in the back. I know it's insane. I know it's insane. But I'm telling you, my little cartoon will have an impact on you. I'm still single, could you tell? Oshinoko is shaping up to be a series that, despite having comedic elements at times, will be an anime that will tackle themes that are far from comedic. And while I'm unsure as to where it will go from here as I'm not a manga reader, I can undoubtedly say that this series is shaping up to be one that will forever cement itself as a legend in the anime sphere. This beautiful tragedy of 90 minutes is a fantastic contemporary example of just how not indestructible the human spirit is. Because even the strongest of facades can be easily broken.